Foreign exchange trading carries a high level of risk that may not be suitable for all investors. Before you decide to trade foreign exchange, carefully consider your investment objectives, experience level, and risk tolerance. You could lose all of your initial investment. Educate yourself on the risks associated with foreign exchange trading and seek advice from an independent advisor if you have any questions. All information is solely for educational and entertainment purposes and is not trading or investment advice. Past performance does not guarantee future results. Hello everyone, this is Hugh and welcome to another episode of the Trading Lifestyle Podcast brought to you by TradingHeroes.com. Uh, before we begin this interview, I just want to note that most of the interview questions that I would typically ask a guest on this show have already been asked in a previous interview. Um, that interview can be found on 50's blog, um, and we'll talk about that a little later. And I'll also create a or put in a link in the show notes where you can check that out. Um, therefore, I have referenced that interview, and we'll, I won't be asking those questions. But if you want to find out more about 50, please check out the recording. Um, however, this does give me the unique opportunity to delve a little deeper into what it takes to uh, put yourself in a position to be successful in Forex trading. So um, just to give you a little background on 50 before we get started, uh, 50 pips is the alias that he chose to use online, um, mostly to protect his privacy. And he also wanted people to focus on his uh, trading advice and not so much on his personal life. Uh, he trades his own account for a living, and he also mentors people on how to trade. So I'm very happy to have on the show the one and only 50 Pips. Thanks for taking the time out to do this, 50. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on the show again. You know, it's really my pleasure. I'm, uh, you know, more than happy to to give you the time and uh, and help anybody out. I mean, just one note. <laughs> it's because, I, you know, I see your show, your blog's called Trading Heroes. So I think it should be clear, but, you know, I'm absolutely not a hero, right? <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> I'm just a humble student of uh, price action and and, uh, and market psychology, right? Mm -hmm. Just uh, doing my thing, trying to pay it back, trying to help some people out. So again, th thank you for taking the time and and, um, and for coming up with the co questions and doing something different to what had already been done. So let's do it. Oh, no problem. My pleasure. Um, yeah, so I guess the first question is, when you mentor other traders, what are the biggest mistakes that you see them making? Um, you know, I think the the issue with me is that I tend to be pretty selective with the type of person I take on to work with on a one to one basis. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's a recurring mistake or there's one big mistake everybody's doing. Um, so that really depends. I, I'd probably say that if it weren't for the selection process, I think that one of the biggest mistakes that aspiring traders do is that they they think they know what they're doing before they actually do. <laughs> and that usually leads to uh, trading too big and too much leverage. And as everybody should know and probably knows deep down, uh, size kills, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it, it's very easy to get lucky in this business. And then you get fooled into thinking that this is easier, that you're actually good. But just like any other profession, if you want to be good and have something that's sustainable, you need to work hard and it takes time. So, you know, that's what I would say, really. Mm -hmm. OK, very interesting. Um, so kind of on the flip side, what are the traits that you see most often in people who, who do become successful? I think really it's understanding what the business is about and having a mentality that in, in, that you always want to learn. You're always trying to better yourself. Mm -hmm. In terms of specific traits, I'd say it's really about being patient, humble, realistic with your expectations, uh, detached from the day-to-day -day ins and out, and being in it for the long run. But you got to be a hard worker and willing to put in the work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I guess part of that putting in the work is figuring out uh, you know, what trade, what type of trades or what type of system works with your personality? Um, what kind of advice do you have for people in the fastest way to figure out what's the best time frame or style for their personality? Yeah, I, I think that's really important. But that's I would just say as a side note, I think that's almost secondary. I think there's um, people tend to go into thinking, OK, um, they start thinking they're going to trade and they go, okay, well, how much am I going to trade? 
Am I going to do this as a business? And I am I going to set up as a corporation? How am I going to transfer my funds? What yacht am I going to buy? You know, <laughs> and then they think what you said. What? How should I trade? And then finally they try and understand what's going on. So I'd said the first thing really is to the first advice is to try and understand what this business is about, what mm -hmm. a lot is, what leverage is, uh, you know, what how the market tends to work. Just the broader, the bigger picture, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, then in terms of the, um, it's not really about the fastest way. It's just really about taking the time to learn those basics and then try to integrate those uh, with your personality and not necessarily try and copy what other people are doing. And don't think there's any specific or right way to trade there's no single way to trade there's a lot of different ways to trade there's always a different side of the coin mm -hmm. there's always opposing trades in the market and both trades can get paid at the same time you know or in the same day depending on how you trade them so of course you need to factor in your personality traits and you know if you're really laid back and zen you're not going to be trading a one minute chart <laughs> or if you're somebody who's really impatient there's no point trying to learn a system where you take setups off a weekly chart right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but really the, the the biggest advice i say is really before going you know try and look at the bigger picture first and then start to drill down right uh, okay okay cool very great advice um this this question is just out of personal curiosity uh i just want to see how many approximately what percentage of the people you mentor want to do it full time uh i'd say for about 100 percent really <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, it, it depends. I mean, let me think about it. I think um, uh, I could probably think over the years of one student mm -hmm. that was looking to do this to complement his income and he was very happy with uh, with what he was doing. But I would say ultimately or at everybody pretty much wants to do this full time. Uh -huh. uh, and again, the people I take to take, I tend to take on in a one to one, uh, and I see for you know I follow for a longer period are the guys that want to want to do this full time. You know, I, I um, but I'd say ultimately, you know, once you see this works, especially if you can do it, the natural tendency is to want to go full time. But mm -hmm. or or maybe that's just the kind of people that contact me. I don't. But I'd say pretty much a hundred percent. Okay, interesting. Uh, so of those people who do make it and do become successful traders, um, what's the average time that it takes for them to get to that point? I mean, that's really an impossible um, question to answer. I mean, mm -hmm. um, do you mean trading full time and that's it? Uh, trading full time and profitably trading full time and making some additional income trading full time and supporting a family of six kids and a yacht. Um, <laughs> you know, it depends on your capital, your needs. There's so many uh, uh, there's so many things to factor into uh, into that. Uh -huh. it, it, you know, everybody's situation is different. So, um, you know, um, maybe just just to profitability. How long would it take or does it usually take for somebody to become profitable? I mean, it, it, it OK, well, profitable is different to uh, being able to sustain a family, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, correct. Uh, which is very different. But um, I, I think then you're talking about um, once you start, the important thing is to try and find systems that you're going to want to test and uh, and then you want to take live and I, I i wouldn't take anything live that you haven't been able to trade profitably demo mm -hmm. uh but you know i think there's uh, pretty much any kind of system you want to demo uh you know you should be in a position to know whether that's profitable uh in a couple of months or three months right then mm -hmm. if it's not you might go demo for more to find something different or you might want to demo it for longer just to feel comfortable but so it, it really depends again oh i see okay okay fair enough um so that brings up the question do you have your students uh, you obviously have them demo and forward test but do they do you have them do any back testing also um to a certain extent yes i'm not a massive fan okay mm -hmm. um i think really it's to check some stuff out to get a feeling for 
some kind of integrators or some kind of trends or how things happen, it's great, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about demoing or testing something, uh, you need to do it like a full, full dress rehearsal, right? Mm -hmm. If you're seeing for a play. So I really think you need to do it in a, again, full dress rehearsal in live conditions. And because um, you really need to factor in the emotions, the the dead time, the waiting for the trade to set up, the uh, the external influences, uh, the news, uh, uh, whatever, uh, your, your wife bugging you, you having a bad <laughs> Hey, you know, whatever. Yeah. You need to do it live. And that's also why so many people go, oh, I don't understand. I was back testing. It was really profitable. I went live and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Right. Or, yeah. You know, did you do was it a proper dress rehearsal? Right. Were you doing it in the exact same conditions, exact same strategy, exact same lot size for your account size, etc. You know, mm -hmm. it it needs to be a proper dress rehearsal. Right. Mm -hmm. So I to answer your question. Because I tend to talk a lot sometimes. But <laughs> no worries. To answer your question uh, concisely is, do I get to? Yes, but I think that it serves a specific need, and that's to get a feeling for stuff. If you're demoing something, I'd like it to be live. Ah, I see. Okay, so you just have to understand the limitations of the yeah. backtesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I guess along those lines also, do you, do you have people just demo with uh play money or maybe just put a little bit of money in the in the account and simulate the real market conditions a little more well you know for me the real market conditions are simulated whether there's money or not right mm -hmm. the only uh variable that changes from pure demo to live is how your mind how your psychology reacts to it being real money as opposed to monopoly money mm -hmm. but I think you need to be disciplined to make the demo count too because if if you want to do this for your whole life or you want to make a career out of this and you're thinking, oh, if it's not real, I'm not going to – you know, if you can't focus and make it count on demo because mm -hmm. it needs to be real, then, you know, it ain't going to happen, right? It's yeah. I always tell students, Joe, it's kind of like the guys who say, no, demo is not for me. I need to – it's, it's kind of like, I don't know, first-year med student – they have to do an autopsy and he's going, no, no, bring me a live person. I'm not going to focus or some <laughs> you know, biology class when they're 14 and the teacher wants to dissect a toad and he goes, no, no, I want a human being. You know, mm -hmm. you, you can't, you know, you have to, you, you have to work gradually. Right. Uh -huh. But uh, so um, and, and then once you're, you're confident with a the demo, then you take it live and you start to scale it up. Of course, you don't go full all in. Right. Mm -hmm. Then then you start small and you scale it up. Yeah. But I think everything has a process. Everything mm -hmm. has a um, uh, uh, a proper and slow and steady and consistent road to to success. Oh, okay, okay, very interesting. Um, is there a, a particular point where you recommend people to start trading with real money, or is it just kind of you know they they need to make that decision on their own? Um, you mean in terms of uh, money or in terms of time demo? Uh, in terms of money, like when should they shift from demo to? Uh, real trading so with how much money or how much they'd be making or or w at what point do you recommend that they do that well i think it's there's there's two di you know there was one thing is that uh it depends mm -hmm. from person to person mm -hmm. but you also don't want to be demoing for so long that then you start to get paralyzed and scared of going live, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I think in general, if, if you're trading a system, what you'd like to see is you'd like to see a couple of months profitable. What I like to see is a month negative where you have a bad month and to see how you respond even uh, in demo. Okay. Yeah, that's what I like to see. So I like to see a bit of a cycle and then, and then you can go live, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, and in terms of, uh, you know, also in terms of money and capital, that – you know, that also depends, you know, um, you're going to hear me say it depends a lot. OK. Mm -hmm. And um, it goes back to the initial question. There's just people tend to want a quick and easy, definitive answer mm -hmm. to questions that are not really quick and easy, but are quite complex. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And in general, there are a lot more complex and not as black or as white as a lot of people think they are. Mm -hmm. It would be a lot easier for me just to be very dogmatic and give you an answer. You know, how much how much percentage of my account should I risk? Bam, that much. What 
starting capital. That, you know, yeah. that, that's it. I'm so calm. You know, that would be so much easier for me. It'd be, I, it, would, it would be so much easier for me. But I, that's just, you know, that's just me. That's not the way I roll. If I give an answer, I because I know people, uh, if they ask me something, they're kind of listening to the answer. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I feel a responsibility to give them a, a, a proper answer also because the general state of this industry and all the snake oil salesmen around, you know, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I feel a responsibility to give a proper answer. That's why um, people end up thinking I'm difficult and I don't want to give an answer. And, and, and that couldn't be further from the truth. It's just I'm really, you know, I don't want to sound weird, but, you know, I care. You know, I, I want to give a proper answer. Mm-hmm. So. So if somebody asks me a very specific question or something, I'll do my best to answer. But I, I don't want to make a general because then people end up making a list of a bunch of general points with general answers and think they know stuff. And, and it's not that easy, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Great point. Um, it really depends on the individual situations, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, it's... it's um, yeah. Normally, if you have three months demo, profitable, good, you've had a bad month, you could be good to start. But maybe some people, even though they're ready to start, they just need a bit more confidence and they'll want to go demo for a bit longer, right? Mm -hmm. Some people have been trading for many years, but they're just trying to refine something. So they'll go back to demo and they might be okay just demoing for a month or or five weeks, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Same thing with capital, when to go live. Some people are just going to uh, have some additional capital and trade very low leverage. Some people um, are going to make a living out of it. So they're going to have to trade with with a big they're going to have to have a bigger account to go live if they want to make a living and support a family. You know, it, it really depends on so, some people need uh, uh, some parts of the world with a thousand bucks a month. They'll live like kings and other parts. They're going to need 15 grand to live. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Uh, there's it really depends right mm-hmm. yeah great points great points um so i guess one question that i get a lot is you know people revenge trade and that's a common weakness in beginning traders uh is there anything you recommend to overcome that yeah don't do it <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, you need to be lear- uh, you have to learn to be detached from the market and from the outcome of any day or trade uh-huh, right uh-huh. and usually that's achieved by responsible use of leverage mm-hmm. tends to solve this problem and also not adding to to losing trades um, again you have to understand that no single day is or no single trade is going to define you as a person or as a trader mm. it's about consistency and longevity as i like to say so just just step back don't you know Okay, now I'm going to get people are going to get mad, but you know, you don't want to be the guy shouting in front of your screens on his 12th Red Bull. Uh, <laughs> the world is against him. Uh, the broker is against him. Um, every It's all a conspiracy. It, it just because you're in a bad trade and you don't want to expect, accept the responsibility for your action, you know, mm-hmm. you, you, you got into a bad trade. Well, guess what? Everybody does. Nobody wins 100% of the time. You know, most profitable traders are more than happy with a 50-50 win rate mm-hmm. because then they make up for it with the average, you know, what they win a lot more when they win than when they lose, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not about all or nothing, right? So you need to step back, be detached. That That's the only way you can stop that. Ah, I see. Okay, great point. I mean, keep the bigger picture in mind, right? Yeah, yeah, just, it's just a trade. Yeah. <laughs> but again, you... You can't think like that if you're leveraged like a crazy man mm-hmm. or a crazy woman, right? Yeah. If you're leveraged like hell, it's finished because you don't want to cut your trade because if you cut your trade, all of a sudden you've got so little in your account, there's no way you're going to be able to take that size position again. You, well, how am I going to get it back? And blah, blah, blah. it's just, it's a nightmare, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The size kills, leverage kills, especially when you don't. Yeah, size kills. When you know what you're doing, you know, look at long term capital management, look at all uh-huh. the big funds that, you know, size kills the yeah. big guys, the good guys in brackets. Right. Yeah. Or the, the so-called professionals. So imagine what it does to 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 to, to lo- aspiring traders. Mm-hmm. Totally. Great point. Yeah. I, another thing I guess that I, I know you recommend is uh, keeping a journal of your trades. 
So what are some important things that people should concentrate on when they journal and how often should they review it? I mean, it really depends, but um, it, it, I think what I would say is that you don't want to, you know, you can find so much stuff on the internet, you know, all these things that will calculate to the <laughs> nth degree. It's like you're some kind of NASA, uh, science student or NASA engineer. Yeah. And it's just useless, right? And then you get all these things that you, you, you just give me 15 bucks a month and you'll link with, oh God, I'm going to get in trouble with everybody. But anyway, you know. <laughs> You link with your broker and it's just going to feed stuff in and you're, it, it, you know, keep it simple. You know, you want to review your, your journal every month. If you have limit down and limit down day, limit down week, you want to keep a stab on that. But usually, you know, monthly review is okay. Mm -hmm. It depends on who you are and how you trade. But then just make sure, make sure you put in the stats yourself and make sure you understand what those stats are. You know, any stat that's there that you don't understand what it means or you don't understand how it impacts your results, or you don't understand how you can use it to improve your results, mm -hmm. just get rid of it. There's no point. Mm. Keep it simple, right? Yeah. So, you know, you look at the percentage win rate. You want to look at how much you win when you win. You want to look at how much you lose when you lose. Uh, you know, maybe certain days of the of the week, how you're doing. Uh, if, if you have different trade setups, you might want to compare those. You know, just... Mm -hmm. But keep it simple and cool. actionable. Yeah, yeah. Great advice. Um, so this is another question I get a lot. Uh, maybe somebody, what if somebody has a solid track record, but they just lack the capital to go full time? Um, what kind of options do they have or what would you recommend? Um, you know, best is really just slow and steady. Build your account. I, mm -hmm. if, it's tricky. Borrowing money or levering up or trading other people's money, borrowing your family's money. It's... It usually doesn't end well. <laughs> Sorry, you might hear, you know, one out of a hundred, but it's it's tricky because it's it brings in a whole another set of psychological issues or stress. Maybe mm -hmm. uh, you can look at prop shops or other outfits like that, but usually all these outfits know that you ain't got any cash, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so usually, whatever service they're offering <clears throat> tends to favor them and not you. OK, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so my, some people might really be strapped for cash and you might get a get a good prop firm that's giving you maybe a 50 50 or a 60 40 split on your profits. But you can be sure that they're make charging you for all your trades. Right. So mm -hmm. I still think um, the best is to build up your account. Now, it's not always possible, but usually, especially with the leverage involved, you know, if you're good, you should be able to build up your account. It just means you're going to have to be patient. Mm -hmm. Then some case by case, there might be options, but it really depends on what that option is. I don't think there's really a miracle, miracle, cure, miracle thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just, yeah, slow and steady wins the race, I guess. <clears throat> but if you have a really good track record, mm -hmm. and I mean really good, and and solid track record mm -hmm. it shouldn't be that difficult to find cash if you want to run cash mm -hmm. but the problem is um again I, I don't want to get in trouble but you know if you're a smaller trader and you have a really good track record and you're trading a small account mm -hmm. whether that's one a 1k account a 10k account or a 20k account you know if you're saying okay i want to go to a prop firm or something or i want to get 200 400k a million you know big money to manage usually the trading setups are not always scalable to bigger money and uh. when you find people that are giving you bigger money they want a system that's scalable and sometimes the systems are not scalable mm -hmm. and sometimes it's very tricky to, to see a track record somebody that's been trading say 10 and for you to make sense to give the money, you've got to give them a hundred or a thousand mm -hmm. because you don't know how psychologically they're going to respond. So even if you have a good track record, it's going to be tricky to find serious money to give you a lot more than you're already managing because how are you going to, you know, is it scalable and how you're, you're going to do it psychologically? So even there, you'll have to find, prove yourself again and scale it up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. You know, just think you're going to trade with a micro account, get six months of good results and find millions to manage, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, if there's a lot more. Most, you know, 
we laugh, but the internet, what social media, what the internet, what all these sites do is they tend to promote this and they make people think that you can make a living off a micro account, six months profitable is a great track record, all this stuff just to just to push the dream, just to keep the dream alive and just to sell stuff and generate commissions, right? And, mm-hmm. and that's not what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally agree. Um, so maybe we can get a little more philosophical here. Uh, how important do you think it is to have like a big why um, when, you're, when it comes to trading, you know, a reason for making all this money? Well, assuming you're making all the money, of course, yeah, right? Yeah. But uh, I, I think the... the you know, money is a consequence of a of a job well done, mm-hmm. of respecting your rules or whatever. And you know, I at least in my opinion, I think it's a means to an end, right? It mm-hmm. should not be an end in itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, otherwise, life gets pretty sad, shallow, and and boring. I, I I suspect, right? Yeah. And I think over time and over history, very few great. Mm-hmm sustainable and long-lasting feats enterprises whatever has been have been done or accomplished with the sole pursuit of money money has always been a byproduct mm-hmm. of x of doing something well and as long as it's a byproduct it's okay when it becomes a means then you you do things for the wrong re- it's not you know so i think you need to keep things real right mm-hmm. and in terms of me personally, yeah, I just want to be master of my own destiny. I just want to be self-sufficient, right? It's it's as simple as that. Cool. Very cool. Um, I guess going back to that point you're talking about, about all the information on the internet and stuff like that, um, is there anything you, you can recommend to people about finding a balance between listening to good information and maybe just l- listening to too much stuff and getting overloaded? Yeah, I think, you know, it's tricky. You can always look at who I follow on Twitter, but then again, that's just my follows, right? Mm-hmm. And it could be interesting or not interesting for you. Uh, I think as a general comment is just to keep it useful, right? Mm-hmm. Keep it useful and, and positive. And if you're going to have something on your feed, it has to be something positive and useful and not noise. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to make a difference between work and play, Right. And I would say don't fall into the social hype of getting all excited to involved. Right. Mm. You, you have the luxury to choose all your inputs and influences. Right. Mm. In life. And oh, here's 50 getting psych- philosophical. Right. But <laughs> in, in life or in work, you don't have that luxury. Right. Mm-hmm. You're you're born in the family you're born. You might not like everybody, but tough luck, right? You have the neighbors you have, you might not like them, tough luck. You go to work, you've got the boss, you've got the colleagues, you've got, you can't choose though, tough luck, you have to adapt, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to be a trader in the comfort of your own office with your screens or whatever, you have a huge luxury. You can create your own ecosystem. You can decide the only inputs that come to you, you can decide those. Who am I going to follow? Who am I going to listen to? What am I going to read? Right. Mm -hmm. So take advantage of that and only follow stuff or people that are positive influences and not negative and stuff that's useful, not noise. Right. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of that luxury. A lot of people don't want to take advantage of that. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, They kind of just let everything come in and they they think they should listen to it all. You know, Um, are there like. If somebody maybe if somebody's just starting out, they don't know who to follow online. Are there maybe like two or three people that you would recommend most people starting out with? Um, again, you can check my follows, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But again, it depends. What are you doing? Are you trading uh, the majors? Are you trading uh, yen pairs? Are you interested in the indexes? You know, it really depends, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Uh, d- it depends on so many things. You know, if you want some. Uh, you know, I would say stick to uh, official news sources so you get unbiased information, mm-hmm. uh, though I don't think, you know, that would be a topic for a two hour conversation if, if it's any use to listen to <laughs> yeah. or, or journalists. But, you know, uh, but, you know, I again, but you might want the banter. You might want you might want to follow somebody because he's funny or she's funny. Uh, you know, I, you might want to follow some fashion thing or some sports stuff because it gets your mind off things during the day. Mm-hmm. 
just keep it positive, but it, it really depends. You know, I, I fell into the trick or the trap at the beginning. I was following a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. And to a certain extent, it's a bit sad, right? Because I got too involved. And so I, I just unfollowed a bunch of people. People got mad and whatever. But And I, I, sometimes I really miss It's a real shame because I met a lot of nice people, a lot of really nice people online. And I really enjoyed the banter. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I really miss it. But it was affecting my concentration. And I'm at work, right? Mm -hmm. So my job this is my business i'm at work so i had to cut it down simply because i was getting distracted mm -hmm. uh so different people can tolerate different levels of distractions right mm -hmm. so up to you really i would say yeah okay great point yeah great point um so maybe we can drill down a little bit more into how you trade and um, what you do um i know from your last interview that you mentioned that you primarily trade Fibonacci retracements. Uh, why do you think Fibos work? Well, you know, Fibs aren't magical, okay? There's, mm -hmm. there's just full disclaimer, disclosure, there's no Da Vinci Code kind of thing, okay? <laughs> it's really not magical. It's not, there's nothing magical. Anybody who tells you there's a secret level, there's a secret EMA, there's a magical, you know, just run. It, it just doesn't exist, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I like the Fibs because they fit my view of the normal ebb and flow of the market in terms of healthy moves, in terms of uh, retracements, extensions. And they work to me as a framework around some of my trading. Uh, but there's no right or wrong way to look at it. And I don't on only use uh, FIBS, but FIBS are just a good way to get, have a framework and have some uh, support and resistance levels. But again, if you're going to use FIBS, it's it's I, I you know I could write a book on all the charts you see people just completely using stuff wrongly or or <laughs> trade you know whatever you put on your chart try and understand you know what it means what it says and how to use it but mm -hmm. essentially fibs are just support and resistance levels and there's many ways of trading it there's people who use them to trade the trend there's people who use them to fade the trend there's people to use them to get into counter trend trades so but I just like the structure and the and the um, non um, okay I'm lost for non subjective levels mm, right okay if I'm fibbing a move from a swing high to a swing low or a weekly move or a daily move and you're fibbing it assuming we're looking at the same chart mm -hmm. it's not possible that we do it differently. Mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. it's not subjective if i tell you draw a fib from the high print euro today to the low print to today mm -hmm. if we have the same chart it's not subjective mm -hmm. right yeah and that's what i like about it i i'm not a big fan of subjective stuff so patterns drawing stuff you know i prefer things which are are not subjective oh, okay cool um was there ever a point where you felt like giving up on trading uh not really um no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not saying there weren't very hard times and I, I was running money and stuff. So I think there's definitely times where uh, a lot of people may have stopped or, or jumped out of a window. But, um, you know, it's just not me. Right. I love this too much. And bottom line is I, I'm just I'm not a quitter. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it's like golf. If, if you're playing stroke play or metal play, mm -hmm. you grind out. You ain't picking up the ball. Right. Every mm -hmm. shot counts. Um, you know, finish. If it could take you 50 shots to finish the par three, you're going to hit 50 shots. You're going to finish it. You don't give up. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that's also why a lot of people don't like to play stroke play. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They play stable for it or something. But, it, you know, it, it's just not me. So I, there have been very hard times, of course. But, you know, I've never, never thought of giving up trading. No, uh -huh. just, uh, very cool. Much. Very cool. Um, how much of a factor do you feel that like diet, health, and exercise play in successful trading? You, you know, you need to eat clean and stay fit. You know, mm -hmm. Makes a world of difference, at least in my book, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, especially if you're looking to do this for the long run. And, you know, like the Latin saying goes, you know, healthy mind and a healthy body. I believe it's very important, especially because uh, training is very sedimentary. So, you know, you're, you're in front of your – you're slouched in your chair and – you know, before you, it's just, you need to be awake, right? You need mm -hmm. to be awake, you need to be responsive. 
and, and that comes being fit also, or, you know, I, I think it's very important. Oh, okay. You know, so don't, I, I, I have a standing desk, so I try to stand most of the time. Um, you know, I think it's important. Nice. Um, along the same lines, do you do any type of meditation or mind calming exercises? <laughs> mind calming? No. <laughs> Steam, you need that if you're over leveraged, but, um, <laughs> you know, uh, no need to get excited, right? Mm -hmm. It's just another day in the office, and uh, you know I've worked very hard to learn to be detached, and it's taken me times. So I'm very detached from it all. So for me, there's no need, you know, in terms of visualization. I look at my charts, and if I have to chill, I, I, I've got music, but that's about it. I, I really don't know. I, you know, the short answer is no. Oh, okay, so you kind of just baked it in over the years, basically. I mean, I, yeah, you know, whatever works for you. Yeah, yeah. Right. But for me, it's it's a chart, right? Price mm -hmm. goes up, price goes down. You have a level you want to get in, a level you want to get out. If it works, level you want to get out. If it doesn't work and you hit it, you execute. Mm -hmm. You know, I <laughs> don't need to <laughs> to meditate, visualize or, or, or calm myself. I know what I need to do and I'm doing it right. Cool. Very that's, cool. That's it. Yeah. Um, how much of your account do you risk on each trade? Uh, I, I really don't work like that. For me, it's a, it's a question of risk reward. Right? Okay. It's it's a, it's 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 a question of risk reward, and it, it's a question of total portfolio risk uh, on all the things I may have open and I'm managing. Mm -hmm. So I, I work in a different fashion. So I don't have a percentage fixed uh, amount I risk on each trade at, at all. Oh, okay. Cool. I'm glad I asked that question. Um, uh, if you were to start over, uh, what would you do differently? Mm, you know, I don't want to sound arrogant, but probably nothing, right? I, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that by doing things differently, I could have most certainly had a lot less pain and an easier time. Mm -hmm. But fundamentally, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today. Well, I might be better. Who knows, right? But, <laughs> I wouldn't be where I am today and I wouldn't have learned what I've learned today if it wasn't thanks to my journey, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I've never been big on regrets. You know, I'm really about looking at the future. You learn from your experiences. You move on. You do the best you can every day, every specific chance you have to make a decision and then you just live with it. You, you accept accountability for your decision and the way you move on defines how you you evolve as a trader as a person and and it's what makes you what you are so i, I wouldn't change anything really oh wow. very cool um i know you mentioned that you kind of when you sit down you just look at the charts and everything but is there anything that besides playing music that you do in your free time to take your t uh, your mind off trading um I think I don't really need to take mind off. Tra you mean free time in front of the charts or when I'm not at my desk? Uh, when you're not at your desk. I don't really need to take time off of my mind off trading, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm addicted to golf. A lot of people know complete <laughs> junkie. Uh -huh. uh, I'm very serious about my diet. I'm very serious about working out. You know, the usual books, family, I'm a foodie, uh, the usual stuff. But I don't really feel I need to take time, my mind off trading. Right. Ah. Um, at least not for me personally. Yeah. Yeah. OK, cool. You know, I'm I'm kind of full on, full off kind of guy. Uh -huh. So it, I'm in front of my screen. I'm 100 mm percent. -hmm. I'm 100 percent from Sunday night. Well, semi not 100 percent Sunday. Sunday night, I just do my pay it forward and I record my video or I do my webinar. But mm -hmm. it, for that hour, I'm full on. Then it's back to weekend. And then I'm full on, you know, Monday to Friday from the moment I get to my desk, the moment I leave my desk, I'm full on. When I'm not at my desk, I'm full off, right? Mm -hmm. Weekend, it's off, you know, no email, uh, no internet. I'm just off, right? It's mm -hmm. just so I, I really don't need to. It's I'm just on and off. So it's oh, I don't I think about it. Oh, I see. OK. Um, I know in the previous interview, you mentioned that you're very inspired by other things outside of trading, such as art and music. Um, would you mind sharing some of those things that inspire you? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think what we also talked about is th they were asking, you know, if there's any he 
any hero or anybody I looked up to for inspiration or something by mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And I'm really inspired, you know, not again, not to sound arrogant, but I'm not inspired by by people. I'm uh, I, and then it's always tricky if you say, oh, I look up to this person, then somebody's going to find something bad about that person. And it's just, you know, I'm inspired by 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 accomplishments, by feet. Of course, you know, I, I like beauty, harmony, nature, music and stuff. But what really inspires me is commitment, dedication, you know, not giving up challenges, mm -hmm. being accountable for just being accountable for everything, you know, shaping your your future the best way you can and I, I like challenges you know but any kind of feat when uh, whether it's somebody else or myself you know dedication and trying to accomplish something mm -hmm. I, I like that 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 motivates me whether it's myself deciding I'm gonna do something in terms of a sports event or something uh, with respect to to the gym or or something to help somebody whatever or somebody else when you set your mind to something and you work hard for it and and you don't give up and you know that's what really inspires me dedication yeah. plan wanting to be accountable mm -hmm. and and not accepting things as they are and accepting that you have the power to change things hmm. okay great point um i guess switching gears a little bit uh there's a lot of black box systems and those commercial EAs out there in the Forex market. Uh, what do you think of those? Well, I mean, I could go on for two hours. I don't want to do a <laughs> known for, but yeah, I'd say if it worked, would you sell it? And would you sell it for like nine ninety nine or something? Mm -hmm. So yeah. some work for certain periods of time, mm -hmm. but you're not going to be self-sufficient, right? So, I'd love to have like an automatic pop up on any of those sites where it says no holy grail, you know, move on. <laughs> something to see here. You're going to have to work <laughs> money, right? Yeah. Um, it's just again, as I it's just fueling the dream, mm -hmm. fueling the dream, but mm -hmm. it's just the dream. Yeah. Just trying to take the easy way out. It's just <clears throat> doesn't work. Yeah. But some systems and stuff might work, but then the market changes and they don't work. And then what are you going to do? You have to buy something else. You have to, you know, it's. That's not self-sufficient. That's not creating a business. That's not creating a profession for yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I totally agree. Um, <clears throat> what are some of your future trading goals? Uh, just getting better, really. You know, getting better reading price action, getting better reading the market, getting redder, better with my implementation of what I do, mm -hmm. uh, my management, managing myself, my emotions. You know, just perfecting myself you know like like golf you know you no matter how good you are even if you're a scratch golfer you you've never really mastered the game right mm -hmm. uh you know you you got people who who win masters and then can't make the cut for the next 20 years right uh, -huh. uh and that's what makes it interesting so but i think it's just continuous improvement really that that's that's what what i want to do just to get better uh -huh. ah very cool okay um is there anything that i missed that you would like to talk about um, you know, not, not really. Yeah, this is your interview, right? I'm just giving you my time and paying it forwards, right? So, mm -hmm. up to you, whatever you want. You know, I'm I'm open. It's not I'm not here to talk anything about anything about myself. <laughs> what I do, it's just up. It's your interview. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, definitely appreciate you coming on. And um, just finally, real quick, I just wanted to mention that both of us support Kiva. So if um, you guys want to find out what that's about and how you can help, um, you can check out 50's blog and he has a Kiva link at the top and uh, that helps support entrepreneurs in other countries. So I just want to really thank you for uh, taking the time out to do this interview and uh, uh, if they want to learn more about you, where can they find you online? Um, you know, you got, um, well, if you're looking on Twitter, that's the more most active thing. I'll be tweeting up stuff out during the day. And again, I'm not treating, I used to, I don't, I don't treat out, trade out trade calls or recommendations. I really use Twitter to try and help people out mm -hmm. in on, in giving you key levels or key things to look at. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but I'm tweeting out throughout the day, I'm tweeting out charts, I'm tweeting out the blog updates and that's, uh, at 50 pips on Twitter. Mm hmm and then you've got the blog, which is 50pipsfx.com. And um, again, it's, I, I take some time to go through it. I think there's a lot of free and uh, useful stuff on it, I think, from trade videos to 
webinar recordings, charts, and you know, it's there. It's just my way of paying it for. It's all free stuff. Just just to have a, have a tour, right? Yeah, yeah, no, it's excellent stuff. And I know you mentioned the Sunday webinars. Um, what do you generally discuss on those webinars? Yeah, well, yeah, I used to, I did for about two and a half years, I used to do a full like one hour plus webinar every Sunday, live webinar. Uh -huh. And then a lot of people started to um, say, oh, it's a pain because if I miss it, I have to go through the whole hour and I have to find what, so what can't you just pick out the most interesting things and 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 do a tighter one? So what I've started to do is, uh, uh, so on the first Sunday of every month, uh, I do a one hour live session like the old time. So it's just, you, get, you don't have to register, you just show up, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want your email, I am don't I don't need to sell you anything, I don't need to send you anything, right? So you just show up, no need to pre-register. If nobody shows up, I don't do it, I don't care, right? Mm -hmm. If two people show up, I'll do it. If 300 people show up, I'll do it. And uh, what we do is just, I go through uh, pretty much all the Forex pairs and the, and, and, you know, the, the indexes, gold, crude, and I, I look at the chart, what happened last week, and uh, what are the key levels? Try to explain what the moves were and try to explain what the key levels to watch are for the next week and where the shorts and the longs are going to be fighting it out and what I think is likely to happen. Mm -hmm. And um, on the other Sundays where I don't do a live webinar, I'll just record a, a YouTube video. Usually it's 15 minutes and I'll just pick like four or five charts, the most interesting ones I see for that week and I'll do the same and then I'll post it on YouTube. Ah, oh, excellent. Okay. Yes, yeah, so if you guys are interested, you should check that out. And again, 50, it's been an honor to uh, interview you and I really appreciate you taking the time out. My pleasure. My pleasure. It's good, good stuff. I mean, again, thanks. I think it's good that, um, you know, people like you take the time to do this stuff and uh, if it helps anybody out, it's, it's good. You know, we've done a good deed, so it's paying it forward. It's good stuff. Thank you. Totally. No problem. Well, I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. You too. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Trading Lifestyle Podcast. If you want to find more interviews, tutorials, and random trading videos, check out TradingHeroes.com or follow Trading Heroes on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+.